Yesterday at Oxford, a woman was allowed to speak despite hundreds of whiny baby college students protesting her right to speak. Uh, the woman in question is Professor Kathleen Stock. She is a lesbian professor of philosophy. The thing that she has said that made so many enemies, and she said this in 2018, and that made her trans right activist enemy number one is this. Trans women are biological males. That's what she said. That's what they do not want to hear. Um, now, in the year 2023, you are still not supposed to say that. So she was absolutely witch hunted when she was invited to speak at Oxford. And TRAs, trans rights activists, screamed throughout their her talk. One leading up to the talk was successful at delaying the talk because uh, this woman here glued herself to the floor, took, taking a page out of the Greenpeace activists. Uh, glued her hand to the floor where she was supposed to speak there. Um, I'm going to talk more about this girl later. Uh, but literally, like, you know throwing yourself on the floor hmm. is what toddlers do, is what children do when they don't get their way, is they throw themselves on the floor, right? Yeah. Because they feel so powerless. This is not something that should be happening in academia. There should be speech. Rebuttals. Go ahead. Speaking of rebuttals, so this person glued their hands to the floor right by the podium where she was going to speak. Yeah. Right. So if that were me, I would have, no, you, you can stay right there. And I would have literally put my ass right in his face. <laughs> it's a, it's a girl. I think, her, but, I, for okay. the whole speech, I would just would have stood there right by the podium as a rebuttal. But the thing is ass in that person that face. they're going to scream. They can scream. They're, they're going to scream the whole time. And we will see later that they do. Yeah. Um, the thing is, now I've told you that Kathleen Stock is famous for asserting that uh, you cannot become a woman if you are not born one. Um, but she didn't even speak about gender at all. She was there to speak about free speech and the value of being offended. Because at the heart of her haters is the idea that she should not even be allowed to say something that causes offense. Her speech was quite short. It was less than 10 minutes. And I want to show you two clips that I think that we as a society should want to contemplate. Um, and I let this one go a little bit because you can see that some guy wants to like really prove his point and shout her down. And as he's speaking, there's a bunch of screaming. You can hear all kinds of ambient noise from the people who are, I mean, they, they brought noisemakers. It's, it's the sort of, you know, normal trans right activist playbook is bring noisemakers, bring bullhorns, bring whatever you can do to drown out this so offensive message. Listen, listen to what she Every says. satirical joke that's ever been made has offended someone if it's been effective, because the whole point of satire is to mock irreverently that which people treat reverently. Um, and it's also a paradoxical feature of offence that once some group is massively offended by X, then another group will be massively offended by them being offended. So the whole thing's going to get uh, recursive quite quickly. And all this points to the fact that offence is cheap. It's a very cheap emotion. It's based on uncomfortable feelings in your body. Uh, you feel outraged. I'm feeling some of it right now. You know, it comes quick. It's subcortical. You can't even control it, as has been mentioned already. So why would we ever try to control that which humanly is uncontrollable, which is the feelings of offence when you hear things that... Yes. What is she asking? It's a man asking about being offended. I, I don't really know what he's asking, but the, the point is you can hear from behind him all of the protests. Your drums beating. And yeah. And she just kind of keeps her calm and listens. Okay, that's good. We don't need to okay. hear any more of, of, of that because that now you can hear that she's speaking and you can hear she's kind of rattled because there's just so much distraction. But here is her main argument about a society that wants to avoid being offended so vehemently and what that will do to us. This is her whole point about restricting the whole idea of offense. As I've already indicated, I think that it's a positive value to have a right to offend. And that is not offense is good. That is the right to offend is good because um, Every single moral improvement towards a just society has involved massive amounts of offence. And if we restrict offence, we effectively constrain the ways in which society can get more progressive, can get more 
just, and so on. And the final reason I want to commend this motion to you is that um, your generation, if most of you are undergraduates here, or certainly younger than me, is terrified of causing offence. You may not admit this, you might, it might, it's, it's sort of even a taboo to, to admit that you're terrified of causing offence, because of course you're not, you're very moral people and you'd say what you think. But I don't think that's true. I think social media has made everybody very frightened of causing offence, of saying the right thing or the wrong thing. And that, as you know, is a problem. And I'm sure you know that, because I'm sure you sometimes have rebellious thoughts that you think would offend people if you could say them, but you still think you would quite like to be able to say them. And that's a free society, a healthy society, be one in which we could air these things. We could be resilient enough to take very, very strong criticism and we'd survive. Okay, well, I think that she's demonstrating that resilience because she is taking very strong criticism and she is persevering. Um, the TRA's argument is that they cannot survive her offensive words and they link offense to danger without statistically backing it up. Um, and they argue that they should not even sub be subjected to distress at all, actually. Uh, so back to the woman who glued herself to the floor. She has already shown that she feels this way. You may have seen, this is the same person named Riz, I think is her first name, who had a debate with Piers Morgan recently, and that went viral. Um, she also recently had an altercation with a gender critical person named Billboard Chris, who tends to get a lot of play in this gender critical space. He's a Canadian man who walks around with billboards like this, um, I actually quite like Billboard Chris's message. Do you have his billboard? Just the, the image, the still image? Yes, that one. Um, what Billboard Chris has to say is that there are two biological sexes and zero genders. And his billboard says, children his, cannot consent to puberty blockers. Stop the child abuse. That's, he, yes. So he sort of uses these Christian fundamentalist tactics to, you know, gain your attention about gender critical. Um, and I like this idea of meaning there's no way to express your gender. You are your biological sex. How you express yourself doesn't matter, masculine or feminine, but biology is immutable. Um, I really like that take on it. But recently he was walking around in England with this billboard and he came across this same activist who glued herself to the floor and she went to the cops because of billboard Chris and watch how this turns out. No, no, you're not allowed to obstruct. Harassment alarm and distress to anyone by blocking their right of way. Are you saying I will that? Because I'm pretty it. harassed along. I'm distressed right now. Okay. <laughs> so she says she's distressed right now? Yeah, so I'll just give you that context again. He has a, a sign that says something like no puberty blockers, right? And she's like... You know, she's like, I can't trying even look to make at it sure that other I, people I'm can't so see distressed. it. I'm so distressed. I'm so distressed. No, can't. well, she's she's blocking him. Oh, she's blocking him. She's blocking the billboard, okay. and the police says you can't do that. You can't just go up and block someone's body like that. <laughs> and he says you can't cause distress to this man by like blocking his body. And she's like, what? Because I'm so distressed right now. Look at what I'm looking at, and my distress. I think that this is actually a really good way that we should think about the idea of anti-fragility that these young people are promoting for themselves is that I cannot be expected to become stronger in the face of adversity. I am a delicate flower and I will therefore with wither. You cannot subject me to hard concepts and thoughts and offense. Can we just play that one more time? Because as she points out her like, but look at me, look at my offense. I'm so distressed. That's why you should be protecting me. I, I feel like her reaction is so poignant. No, no, no you're not allowed to obstruct. alarm and distress to anyone by blocking their right of way. Are you saying I will that? Because I'm pretty it. harassed along. I'm distressed right now. Okay. <laughs> me, look at me. I'm it's too fragile for this, it's right? All, it, it, I need you to realize that I have the right to not be offended. Um, that's, that's her argument, right? Against Kathleen Stock. Well... Uh, look at what some of these protesters just in the run up to Kathleen Stock's speech today had to say about Kathleen Stock herself and why she shouldn't be able to offend offend them. 
It's the fact that the union has given her a platform simply because they knew it would be controversial. The Oxford Union to have her as the headline name without any experts coming to counter her arguments, I think it's really dangerous because it's just going to be giving a lot of essentially fake news to people. Trans students are being made to attend the union and fight for their own rights if they want to challenge her. There's no guarantee that the union committee will ask her questions that are representative of us. Well, Professor Stock arrived very cloak and dagger for this event this evening via a back entrance, security clearly a concern. She rejects that her views are hate speech and she said that controversial and difficult views need to be tested in the public sphere and that's a view that has been echoed by the Prime Minister as well who supported this event taking place tonight. You guys, in the year 2023, you need security if you say that a biological male cannot be a woman. You have to walk into an event with security in the, uh, what is this world? And now it's funny because as she was walking in, I thought, oh my God, she's so brave. Like, look at her with this, you know, she seems so, and now she's sort of been memed by people who are gender critical. I, can you show the image yeah. on your screen? Um, and so, no, yes, that one. Uh, you know, this sort of like walking bravely in the face of adversity to just only define something which we innately know as a species is now takes this kind of security and bravery. To be, I, a, myself, to be a woman, an adult human female. Yes. That it requires security. Requires security to say that. Um, you know, the, and what are they asking for? You know, these people who spoke on camera, they wanted an expert to counter her. I'm sorry, my accent's terrible. Um, you know, this expert, expert to counter what she's but saying. But again, she's not speaking about gender. What she's speaking about is offense. So they wanted an expert to argue for this cult of safetyism. Right. This right? idea that, that we've got to protect is hurting you. Yeah, right. That we've got to protect these fragile, well, little, delicate flowers. Is, is anybody preventing them from inviting the, the, this mystery, like anti uh, like offense person, like to the, to no. the university say you can't bring in a speaker. No. Yeah. Like they just need it. They need it to be at the exact same time. It needs to be point counterpoint yes. in, in real, yeah. like real time. That's the yes. only way it's acceptable because they'll forget what they said before. I don't right. know. That's just yes. madness. Yeah. No. And there are plenty of academics who will argue for this cult of safetyism. He's right. They can, they can, I can name about five right now if I'm really thinking about it. Um, but I want to just give you this background about Kathleen Stock because there's part of me that knows the history of this um, gender critical movement. And she's been at the heart of it for a really long time, even though other people like J.K. Rowling or um, Helen Joyce and Abigail Schreier have become a little bit more known for it, but it was always her at the center of it. And so now I think it's interesting that we're noticing that uh, because she is an academic who has been so harassed that she quit her job at the University of Sussex recently because the university could no longer guarantee her safety. Um, she also is the person that started the J.K. Rowling debate, and I just want to give you that background quickly. Uh, in 2018, Kathleen Stock wrote an article against the gender ID laws, and Maya Forstater, who worked at a think tank called Center for Global Development, at the time tweeted about a debate based on Kathleen Stock's ideas that sex is immutable. She was fired for that from her job. And this is the tweet that really got J.K. Rowling to jump into this world uh, where she said, dress however you please, call yourself what you like, sleep with any consenting adult who will have you, live your best life in peace and security, but force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real. I stand with Maya. This is not a drill. This is the thing, you guys. This is the thing that got J.K. Rowling the label of turf numero uno. People in the chat were asking, what is a turf? Uh, tr a trans exclusionary radical female. A AKA a woman. No, it's a woman who wants to assert that we have a unique experience as biological women that men cannot self-select. So into. if you like you, a woman saying that only biological women can have a period. Yes. Uh, it, that makes you a turf. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Or if I say, you know, like it, Yes, menstruation is an important part of womanhood. That makes me a turf. Breastfeeding. Or even the women who wore those, you know, um, pee hats to the Trump rally. Yeah, you yeah. know, those women were called turfs because it made trans identified males feel bad because they don't have peace. 
Oh, yeah, because they were wearing vagina hats. They were shaped as the P word. They called them the P hats. And that was excluding the men who want to dress up as women. Yes. And in fact, the knitting pattern that went around in in advance of the women's rallies was called, we're going to knit the P hat. And they wore, you know, those Mm -hmm. And that was trans exclusionary. Um, okay, so again, after this tweet, let's just circle back around. They called for J- J.K. Rowling's head on a platter. Um, and it's worth noting that Maya Forstater has since won her case for wrongful termination, but only after an appeal, because the original court ruling was that her belief that sex is real was not a protected belief. The j- first judge ruled that her belief that sex in sex was not worthy of respect in a democratic society. Literally, because she said biology is real, the judge ruled that that is not a belief worthy of respect in our society. Uh, During the first trial, she was asked these questions. How did you come upon your novel belief that sex in humans is immutable? On what basis do you think male people cannot be female? Can you name a philosopher that agrees with you? Literally, she was asked these questions at trial. Where did she get this novel idea that sex is immutable? It was a clown show. Uh, She has since appealed and won. And so, again, uh, this is why Kathleen Stock is so offensive, because she is one of the OGs, which uh, I really like this sort of like gangster look of hers now walking in like, yeah, I said that a woman's a woman. You know, I'm an original gangster here. Uh, This is why they feel better if she's silenced, alone, deplatformed and dehumanized. But she spoke anyway, and I think that that's really something. She's not the only one, though. This week in Israel, the same thing happened to Abigail Schreier. Her book, Irreversible Damage, uh, was published in Israel, but two publishers refused to carry it because her book makes the case that there is a social contagion to gender dysphoria and that medicalizing young bodies causes irreversible damage. Her speech that she gave was covered by the media like this, They called her like American ideology and anti-trans. You know, they talked about how people just don't want to hear it. Two venues were pressured by pride groups to cancel her talk, even though hundreds of people had already paid for tickets and the event had to be moved to a smaller suburban location. And here's how she put it. Like, even despite all of that, attendees had to walk through a throng of hundreds of enraged protesters screaming, blaring horns and banging drums. Attendees knew that there might be disruption inside. And there was one protester who rushed the stage and had to be wrestled to the ground by audience members, something anyone who bought a ticket knew might happen. And still it was standing room only. So the leftist media declares that only a few attended, but she said it was packed. Um, And it's just, this is a technique totalitarian, she says, have always used to make their opponents feel small and marginalized. And it's an optical illusion because there are people who want to hear that their sexed experiences of their bodies matter. Hmm. So... That's your update on that one. Unbelievable. Well, good for her for being able to speak. And I have to say, you know, we've been incredibly critical of Rishi uh, Rishi Sunak uh, here on this channel. And we always call it like we see it and we call it fair. He stood up and said she should be able to speak. And he he came out in her defense and said, absolutely, she should be able to speak. So, yeah, he admonished Oxford to keep this on the books. And it, in fact, did happen. And Oxford actually was very vocal about the fact that, like, We think this should happen. We believe in free speech. And again, she was not even asked to speak about gender. I I don't know if these people actually had any, um, if they knew that she wasn't even there to speak about gender, they just don't want her to speak about anything. Yeah. Uh, So. All right. Let us know your thoughts. Oh, just real quick. I was going to say like the the idea of, you know, people should have the right to say whatever they want. Nobody has an obligation to listen. So the obligation yeah. is on you. If you don't want to hear what they have to say, then don't. Right. But if you're, yeah. you're like you're yeah. trying to trying to cut it off at the sources is, is just it, it's, it's ridiculous. Childish. Yeah. yeah. If you've got a closed mind and you only watch things that affirm your world beliefs, like you're one of those like Fox News drones that only like flips on Fox News yeah. and keeps it on 24 hours a day, and you just regurgitate what Sean Hannity says, then good good on you. Like I don't want to hang out with you. Yeah, you know? but you can not watch NBC then if that's what you want to do, right? right? You can't flip around and get an, a worldview. See, like, how is CNN spinning this story? How are these other things, you know, uh, and, and and just shut it all down and stand in front of people and impede their yeah. you know, their bodies? I'm reading a book right now that I really disagree with. It's making me super uncomfortable. It's the type of book that 
like I, I don't know, but I just keep I keep with it because I'm like, is there something here for me? Is there something I can understand? Right. And these the, I'm, I'm not up so upset about it that I think this person should be deplatformed or silenced or alone or put in a basement. Right. And so I don't understand this this baby cult of safetyism. I don't think it serves. I think we should want young people to be much more resilient than that and have conversations and debates. Right. So that's what this show is all about. We hope that we at least open your mind to these different uh, viewpoints that we don't have one viewpoint and we're all like drones and follow one one way or the highway we want you to be challenged every night on this show we want you to be uncomfortable every night on this show because that's only that's the only way you grow you only grow through discomfort so all of this like fragility we're like going to protect these little snowflakes from ever having to experience any discomfort in their lives is going to raise an entire generation of feeble fragile failures Feeble, that fragile. That was a nice alliteration. Feeble, fragile failures. I'm going to put that on a shirt. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.